Hi everyone, we're just going to continue reading what witches don't want Christians to know. But I did want to say something, there is a few things in this uh, book that I don't agree with, that what she talks about. One is all the support, you know, not giving enough support to Israel and all of that, and that'll bring judgment onto our nation for not doing that. Well. She's wrong on that. Because after Jesus died on the cross for us, Israel, now we are spiritual Israel. The, the physical Israel over there is not what the old Israel used to be in the Old Testament. Or, you know, they're all... Most of the people over there in Israel don't even believe that Jesus is God. That it was God manifested in the flesh down here. So, I mean, they got a lot of issues. So... And some other things about maybe the church that, you know, that she went to in here or whatever. But the main information is about the gang stalking and how the spirits manifest in people and what to do to help with that. So I'm going to start where uh, I left off yesterday before we get interrupted. And it'll be amazing if we don't get interrupted a hundred times when I'm trying to read this to you guys. But anyways, okay, here we go. A Jezebel spirit will always usurp authority and take the land. The spirit takes great pleasure in lifting someone up before the people and then letting the crowd see how it can cause them to take a nosedive. Since I was under the influence of this spirit most of my life, I am especially cautious in making decisions, etc. I had to rewire my thinking into what the word of God says about the headship of my husband. Getting our house in order was extremely important for our entire family. I was always making decisions instead of discussing them with my husband and letting the final decision be his. Satan uses this spirit to prey upon wounded women and pressures them to work against their husbands instead of in agreement with them. Sometimes a Jezebel spirit will disguise itself as a Deborah anointing, like in the book of Judges. The Holy Spirit instructed me on how to tell the difference. A genuine Deborah anointing Prays for God to raise up mighty men of valor and issues a prophetic clarion called to these men and says, It's time to take the land, men. God is saying that he will give you the victory. I will back you with my prayer. The counterfeit Deborah anointing is prideful and says there aren't any men that will stand up and get this job done. So, obviously, I must take the lead. The Ahab spirit suppresses men's authority and pressures them to succumb to the wishes of their wives. When this is out of order in your home, Satan has a strong foothold to use against you. Usually a man oppressed by an Ahab spirit will defend his wife even if she is wrong. Frankly, I believe that this is the only time that these men are allowed to flex their masculinity. I have witnessed women led by a Jezebel spirit who use this to their advantage and they will usually appear hurt or subdued in order to get the support of their husbands. Otherwise, they totally rule the roost. Unfortunately, I have even heard of women withholding intimacy from their husbands to manipulate them. This should not happen in a Christian home. I realize that what I am going to say next is going to be as welcome as ants at a picnic. While I am a sincere supporter of women not being suppressed, equal pay, etc., and I truly appreciate the sterling attributes of the working women and have personally benefited by their contributions. Satan has used the Jezebel spirit to press some women into positions that cause their houses to be out of order. I believe that this is a contributing factor to our nation being out of order and in dire straits. In the last 50 years, we have been moved out of our homes into the workplace. How many of us have opted for unhealthy junk food because we were exhausted and faced a mountain of laundry in the evenings? When mothers are in the home, they can accomplish many important tasks and pray at the same time. Satan has been working for years to strip our nation of this important prayer base. I believe that all of this was an intricate scheme of the enemy to weaken us physically and spiritually. Right now, our nation is at a strategic point. We need men with anointing like Joshua to move on our nation in the right direction. With the resurgence of the ancient demonic forces that controlled Babylon and ancient Egypt, 
The mighty men of God need to raise up and take this land. The women, the women can facil facilitate this victory by our prayerful support of our husband leaders, our husbands and leaders. I am not implying that women do not have important leadership roles in the body of Christ, but I believe that a united force of husbands and wives in agreement, flowing with the kingdom of God, is what will is what will turn the tides. I have heard some ministries say that this is the time for women in ministry. I agree with that statement, but I pray that we all can flow with where God needs us to stand. I have searched my heart on this issue and prayed to ensure that I have not gone from one end of the spectrum under the influence of a Jezebel spirit to the other, a skewed view of where God needs women to stand at this present time. I have such an appreciation for powerful ministries of women like Joyce Meyer. I have been taught so much by prophecy spoken over us by Dr. Mary Ann Brown. She is a bold prophetess that God is using mightily. She poured spiritual water on our thirsty souls. I want to be very clear about my admiration of women in ministry before I state the following. I truly believe that the Holy Spirit is saying that the strength and prayers of the women of God can provide a stable catapult in the spirit in the spirit realm that is needed to propel the men of our nation forward like like Joshua this is a critical time for all of us I perceive that the enemy is going to try and push some women ahead in this effort and I believe it is vital that we stay in a supportive position for a season you probably think that our nation's present economic status is necessity necessitates even more mothers entering the workplace since there are important decisions being made concerning the finances of each household at this present time this might be the moment to seek god's wisdom on providing a plan maybe in a miraculous way for wives to stay in the home if that is something that your family desires some people with computer skills can actually work from their homes if you are sensing that the Holy Spirit needs you on the home front for your family and as a member of this important prayer team, I believe that God can take your faith and produce a miracle. A Disturbing Vision <clears throat> I want to share a vision that I received during prayer one day. I heard God speak that there was something important that he needed to show me. As always, I bound Satan to ensure that he could not show me any false visions and I loosed the power of Almighty God within me to ensure that I only saw what he allowed through the power of the name of Jesus. While I was aware of my physical surroundings, I began to proceed down into a dark place. I was aware that Jesus was beside me. As I entered a very large, dark area, I could see demons on both sides. As I approached the area with the Lord, it looked like the demons were attached to an invi invisible vacuum sweeper and were being sucked backwards at a very high rate of speed. I approached a large door. I heard Jesus say that there was something that I needed to see that would be very difficult to look at. The door opened and there stood the most beautiful woman that I have ever seen. She was adorned in a breathtaking garment with gems that sparkled. I am sorry for the graphic nature of the following description description but I need to share the significance of this vision one demon after another was bringing her the remains of aborted babies which eat with each presentation she gained power there was some sort of energy manifesting around her that would increase with each presentation she turned to look at me and her eyes were deep pits of black I felt a wave of her intense hatred sweep over me the door shut and I turned to leave over to my left, a mist arose, and a voice said, Why did you bring her here? I heard the voice of Jesus say, Because she has a right to know what she is fighting. The voice in the midst then said, If you ever bring her here again, Jesus says, You'll what? The whole place felt like a powerful earthquake hit it. The vision was over, and I heard the voice of the Lord say, that was the whore of Babylon, and she is gaining great power. I knew that the whore of Babylon was discussed in the book of Revelation, but I was not going to be able to process the significance of that vision for quite some time. I knew that our nation was in great danger because of the abortions that were being performed. There were many times 
in prayer that I would hear Almighty God say to me that the blood of the innocent children was crying out from the ground. My generation came to age as the whole abortion issue was being discussed, and Roe v. Wade was in the works. I remember someone saying to me one time, in support of abortion, that it was better for a child to not be born than to be born and not wanted. I was too young and too lacking in spiritual wisdom to argue, but inside I knew that statement was wrong. I would like to go back to my teens and know what I know now. I would have taken to the streets in protest, declaring that if our nation legalized abortion, we would be put on a path to destruction. I am thankful for anointed men like Harry Henry Groover that walks the cities of our nation asking God to forgive the sins of abortion. I am sure his prayers have kept the protective hands of God over those these cities many times. I don't think most people understand what will happen to our nation if God's protective power is removed. There have been many times in prayer that God has said that he is lifting his hands from our nation. The resulting calamity may be what is needed to get our attention and shake us out of our slumber. God help us and let a cry of repentance begin to come out of our mouths. I am reminded of the promise of the Lord in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. <clears throat> Fall of 1995, all hell breaks loose. On a fall night in 1995, I felt the drawing of the Holy Spirit to go out onto our porch and pray. I prayed for quite some time, and I heard with great clarity the voice of God. He said, Mary, there are people that follow Satan that are going to defile the Feast of Tabernacles. I want you to pray that they will not accomplish anything what they set their hands to do. The first thought in my mind was, what is the Feast of Tabernacles? God spoke. Look in Leviticus 23. I immediately ran inside and got my Bible. Even though I firmly believe that I have been hearing the voice of God, I still was amazed when I opened my Bible to Leviticus 23 and found the Feast of Tabernacles. I was asking God for confirmation, and he gave it. The verse indicated that the Feast of Tabernacles started on the 15th day of the seventh month. I didn't know how to compare that date with our calendar. I went to my husband. My husband had been a student of the Word since he was 13. And I asked him how to find out when, the date, when that date occurred on our calendar. He said that we needed a Jewish calendar. We found one, and to our amazement, the Feast of Tabernacles started the very next weekend. Unaware of what was ahead, I was elated that I had confirmation that I had heard from God. I spent many hours that week feverently praying that Satan's plans would be thwarted. I would soon learn the significance of what I had prayed. The following Saturday, I had planned a trip to a neighboring town to buy groceries. I was going to have a meal at my house after Sunday church service so the members of our church could pray with us about whatever was taking place that weekend. Have you ever had one of those days when that you had a heightened sense of awareness where you knew that more was going on than meets the eye? As my family made our way to several stores, my youngest daughter, 11 years old at the time, needed to use the restroom. We stopped at one of the largest retail stores and I walked in with her while my husband and the oldest daughter waited in the vehicle. As we got to the restroom, I noticed two people standing there smiling at me. I felt compelled to stand across from them and told my daughter to go in the restroom while I waited outside the door for her. All of a sudden, an old, very odd woman wheeled up to me on one of those scooters for the elderly. She gazed up at me and said, Where is this thing supposed to take place? Those people are standing where I am supposed to be. She was pointing to the smiling people across from me. I was thinking, lady, I don't know what in the world you're talking about, but I said, hasn't God given us a beautiful day outside? She looked up at me with a horrid look on her face, gasped, and sped off. I honestly believe she was part of a group of people that were sent to harm my family that day, and I believe that those two smiling people were not standing there by accident. You'll understand as you read on. 
My daughter came out of the restroom, and we proceeded to the next door. By this time, my stomach was giving me the usual signals that something was not right. When we got to the next store, I noticed that there were several people from my hometown in that store. They looked nervous and kept watching us. We later went back to the large retail store and I noticed a very tall man smiling at me and my oldest daughter. My husband and youngest daughter were in a different part of the store. He began to follow us everywhere we went. Although I wondered what, what he was doing, I got the feeling that he was one of the good guys. I believe that this was an angel sent to protect us. My stomach was churning with discernment by the time that we were preparing to leave. As we approached the checkout aisle, I noticed that the tall man took a military stance and stared at the exit door. At the end of our checkout aisle was a woman that I knew from our hometown. She was pointing my family out to someone by the door, and she had the most evil look on her face. When I got to the place where I could see who she was pointing us out to, I saw a very large man with demonic tattoos all over him and a shirt with demonic images. There was another smaller man dressed the same, pacing nervous, nervously back and forth. At this point, I was pretty sure that this had to have something to do with my prayers, but I tried to keep things low key so my children wouldn't be frightened. We made it home without incident and I remained prayful. The next morning, we were preparing to go to church my husband happened to look out the back door, and there was blood all over the back patio. Trying not to be paranoid, I reasoned that an injured animal could have wandered by. That thought quickly faded as we proceeded to church. We stopped by a local grocery store, and my husband went inside. I stayed in the vehicle with the girls, and another woman that I had attended school with walked into the store. She looked over at me, and it looked like her eyes about bugged out of her head. I now recognize the manifestation of spirits on people. So looking back, I believe that something in her saw the powerful angels that God had placed around us that day, and that demon about leaked out of her body. At the, at, at the time, all I could think was, how bizarre. We continued on to church and finished the services as normal, although toward the end of the service, my gut feeling was indicating that something was wrong again. We stopped by the grocery store once more on our way home to pick up some items that I thought we could use for our guests that afternoon. We had our two girls in the van and two other children from church that were coming home with us. We pulled up to the store and my husband went in, while the rest of us waited in the van. I noticed several cars pulling up, pulling up simultaneously by us. My stomach started to churn. Although these vehicles had individuals that I have known for years, Next, a woman that I had attended high school with started to enter the store. She looked over at me and started toward the van. She opened the door on my husband's side and said, Where are you going, Mary? I even surprised myself when I said, You know where I'm going. Her face distorted and she began to crawl across the seat towards me. Her tongue was sticking out and she made some kind of sound. It sounded like hissing but I don't know how an individual makes that sound while their tongue is sticking out. Well, you can imagine my shock. My kids were saying, Mom, what's going on? They were frightened. I proceeded to take my seatbelt off. My first thoughts were not godly at all. As a matter of fact, I thought that if she tried to touch my children, I was going to roll her over. I was going to roll her all over the asphalt of that parking lot. She stretched her hand toward me. Then, I guess the Holy Spirit took over because I said her name and told her that I loved her, but if she did not turn from what she was doing, that she would be destroyed. She looked like she melted and then started to slowly crawl back out of the van. She faintly said, You mean turn like this? She turned her back to me. She turned her back around and stared at one of the children from our church and began to speak in a foreign language and walked off. It took several hours for things to sink in. I had to come to grips with the fact that I have known these people for years and I hadn't had a clue that what they were involved in, the occult. I started a long process of trying to figure out how I could have lived in this town all of these years and not realized the seriousness of the occult activity. I should have considered, I should have considering that there had been cattle mutations several years before and that our town was well known for drugs 
It was one of those small towns where everyone knows who drugs deals, but n who deals drugs, but no one is ever arrested. And people end up dead as reported suicides with more than one bullet hole in their head. As we were able to assess our situation, it became apparent that our town was one small dot on a map of vast connections to the occult. I came to the conclusion that the people in our town were small potatoes, so to speak. They were getting their older son their, their orders from another city. They were going to be encounters ahead with more powerful people from St. Louis and even out of state. Our town just happened to be tucked away in the middle of nowhere. A convenient place for experimentation and rituals without notice. There had been so many strange instances in my town that all of a sudden made sense. I was able to put situations, even from my school days, in perspective with this revelation. The puzzle pieces were starting to fall into place. Okay, we're going to stop there. And I will talk to you guys later. See you, love you, bye.